Hi everyone, great to see you all again. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about white balance and how in Lightroom you can use it to create some amazing images. So I started with an idea for this video about using white balance and how I use white balance in my images to in a, in a more creative way through a conversation that I had with a workshop client recently. We were talking about getting the right white balance and setting the right white balance and I, I was saying that you don't really need to worry about it too much and it's very much a creative process afterwards. If you get accurate white balance then often that just doesn't look great in the image and, and actually what you want to do is accentuate those warm to tones or show the real cold tones in the image and if you just get perfect greys all the time then that, that, that just doesn't work. So then when I was editing the images on last week's vlog, um, I realized that I'd, I use white balance again in, in editing these to bring out some of the greens and the oranges and, and, and I edited the white balance slightly different in the image. So I thought it'd be a good idea to create a video about how I did that. And also I've got some fantastic Lightroom tips as well that I can share with you. Okay, before we go into that, um, I just wanted to show you um, and go back to an image that I've, I've shown a few times before, but this is an image that I took, hopefully you can see that, this is an image that I took um, when it was just the end of autumn, um, beginning of winter, and it was its first autumn frost, I call it, and it's a good example of using white balance and differentials in white balance to create a real great mood in an image. So here we've got the, the warm tones at the top and the cooler tones at the bottom. Now, I, I did create a video about how I did this as well in Lightroom, so you can check that out here, but I think it's a really good example of how white balance can make a really big difference to an image. I really love printing my images, so I want to show you how I've taken those images in Lightroom and then printed them out. And I've also got an extra image to show you that I didn't show you last week that's sort of grown on me. It was one of those images that one time I, I really liked and then the next time I looked at it, I wasn't so sure. So I can show you that as well because now I really love the image. Okay, let's go and have a look in Lightroom. Okay, so here we can see my images from a week last Friday and a lot of them you will have seen in the video that um, I published last Sunday. If I just, I've just put a filter on here just with the colour red so for, for two photos that I'm going to have a look at. So this one um, is the image that I'm going to edit and this is what it's going to look like after I've edited it. So you can see that there's a subtle difference to it and one of the big things is that this green area here is, is, is significantly different than the original image that I took. You can see here that it's more of an orange and it sort of blends into the, to the background a little bit more. Now the first thing to do is just have a quick look at the white balance. And if you want perfect white balance, you can use a color card like this X-Rite color checker. But as I was saying before, you don't really want that perfect white balance because the white balance at sunset is roughly around about, um, or the color temperature, I should say more accurately, at sunset is around about 3,200 Kelvin. Just for those who don't understand the hue-based Kelvin scale, then basically it's a way of measuring the temperature of something, so how hot something is based on its color that it emits. And the hotter something is, the bluer it goes. So it's sort of counterintuitive, really. So a sunset scene where you've got more attenuation of the sun rays through the atmosphere, or more accurately, the reflection of the blue um, side of the spectrum, then you get more orange light, and that orange light has a lower Kelvin hue. And at in colder temperatures, so shadow detail, pre-sunrise, -sun then you're gonna have a very, a very large Kelvin, so something like 10,000 Kelvin. Now sunset is around about 3,200 um, on the hue Kelvin based scale. So if I move this image here before we get into the edit editing of it to 3,200, then you will see that the, the image is now probably more naturally looking, but it doesn't look great for a sunset. You know, you, you wouldn't be really pleased about putting that on your wall as a sunset image. Now, forget my finger that's in here, we're gonna sort that out in a minute. But actually, I know that what, what I want is something much bigger than that. So I want it to be looking quite orange. Now, I might change this afterwards, but I'm gonna go for around about 6,200. Okay, so you can see up here on the top right that I've got my finger there. I knew that I was gonna crop the right-hand side of the image, so I wasn't too worried about just 
my finger coming in on the right hand side. The idea was that I wanted to get rid of any flares that there was quite a lot coming across the lens. Okay, so once I've cropped it, I just wanna quickly um, sort out the highlights here, um, but also increase the overall exposure of the image. So I'm just gonna increase the exposure of the image probably to about plus 0.75, and I'm gonna reduce the highlights of the whole image as well. So there's no blown out bits, and this is looking a little bit better. It's probably a, a more uniform exposure now as I'd envisage it when I took the image. So the next thing to do is I want to look at the sky and just put a graduated filter onto the sky. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna drag a graduated filter on the sky there. And I'm also gonna use a range mask. So this is a new feature within Lightroom. I'm going to do it on luminance, which means that what, what I want to do is I only want to change the exposure values of the darker parts of the sky. So I'm just going to reduce this down to probably around there. But if you click Option or Alt, depending on whether you're using a PC or Mac, then you can see the white areas, the areas that you're going to affect when you change the exposure. So I'll probably that's probably okay. I don't want to change the exposure of these lighter areas here. So then I am just going to reduce the exposure of the sky probably down to about there. And I'm also going to reduce the blacks in the sky down to maybe about there. And I'm going to increase the clarity slightly, ever so slightly in the sky. I might come back to that, but that's that one done. I'm then going to put another graduated filter for the foreground. So again, I could move it afterwards. I'm just going to be fairly rough and ready with this for now. And with this graduated filter, I want to reduce the temperature of the foreground. So I'm going to significantly reduce it. Um, so this is the bit that I want really orange and, and this area up here. I'm not too bothered about that. I, I think that's probably about right. But I'm going to reduce that and I'm also going to make it slightly greener as well because I want to start to pull out some of the greens in this area and some of the greens in this foreground as well. I'm going to do some other things to, to increase those green areas but I'm going to reduce that fairly significantly. Yeah, so that's looking better. So I now want to look at this area here. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just gonna create an adjustment brush. I'm just gonna reduce the size of it. And I'm gonna brush in an adjustment here. Now a good thing to do is just click this to show the, um, the brush and where, where, where you're creating this brush. Again, I'm gonna do it fairly rough and ready now. I'll probably be a little bit more careful if I had a bit more time. And once I've done that, what I want to do here is I want to create more contrast in this area here. So, well, first of all, I'm gonna increase the contrast significantly. And I'm gonna again re reduce the temperature and add some more green in. I want to really have this contrast of this green grass that is how I saw it with this really orange glow here. So I'm gonna increase the whites reduce the blacks a little bit, so some more contrast. I'm gonna increase the shadows, and I'm going to just slightly decrease the highlights, and then I'm gonna add quite a significant amount of clarity there as well. Yeah, that's much better now. So I just don't wanna overdo it, but I, and, and it's the same with a lot of the edits that I do. I don't want to overdo these edits, I just want to bring out some of the interesting areas of the image. So now what you can see is I've started to get an image that's got a little bit more punch to it. I've got more contrast between the greens and the oranges. But what, but what I'm still not happy about is this bottom left-hand side of the image. So if I just zoom out here, I still want to pick up some more of the greens here. It's too orange. So I'm gonna do another graduated filter and just put it across here. And I am going to, in this case, I'm gonna use the range mask, but I'm gonna use a color range mask. Okay, and what we're trying to do here is trying to select this green area, because I want to lower the white balance of the greens and the sort of stony colors, but I don't want to change the white balance of this 
sort of grass that's catching the, the, the golden light from the sun. And this is a fantastic, this range mask is so good for doing this. So you, once you've selected the color you want to um, change and you can drag on it with a square if you want to be more accurate, if you've got a big area of color, um, and I can click option then, and I can then see all the white areas, the areas that are gonna change. So I know that the black area here is, is, isn't gonna change. So I'm gonna then just significantly reduce my temperature of that area down to there. And that's done. The only other few things that I need to do are, I'm gonna just go down to the HSL slider which is the hue, saturation, and luminance, and it allows you to change the hue, saturation, and luminance of individual colors throughout the image. So you can pick with this, you pick a tool, you can pick and change them all at the same time. Or in this case, I know that I want to change the yellows in my image, because yellows tend to be, quite often, the green areas of your image, and I want to make them slightly greener. So just by increasing this, you can see that the greens are gonna go slightly green. I don't wanna overdo it and make it look like that, but I want to move it to around about plus 16, uh, maybe about plus 19. And then the final thing is I'm just gonna slightly increase the saturation of the oranges and yellows in the image. Okay, one final thing to do is split tone in. I tend to do this with most of my images, but it's really, but split toning is really, really subtle. Um, you've got to be super careful with it, otherwise it can ruin the whole look of the image. And the only thing I'm going to do is the highlights, I'm going to slightly tone them orange. So what I do is I increase the saturation quite significantly, and then I find the color that I think is about right, which is probably around about there. You can pick it if you want, but I know that's about right. Um, and then I reduce the saturation because that's way too much. So I will probably set it usually around about eight. And that just adds this really golden glow to this area of the image. Then you can see that it's a significant improvement and I pulled out that green area in, in, in the grass, which I saw when I was there, but was very difficult to be picked up by the camera. Um, by using a combination of local adjustments and white balance. So to print this image, what I would do is I go to the print module. I then make sure I got the right paper size by clicking paper page setup. It's A3 on my Canon Pro 1000. I then choose the size of it. So I want to fill as much of the image as I can. Usually I leave a bigger border at the bottom for signing my images. So if I click simulate paper and ink, then it gives you an idea of what this is gonna look like when it's printed. So I always find that this overdoes it. So I, I don't think it ever looks quite as matte as, as, as this in, 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 in reality on, on this photo speed NST bright white 315 paper. I think you've got to judge for yourself whether, you, whether your printer, how your printer works. One thing I would say is you need to get a profile for your printer and the paper you're using. So in this case, I've got this profile um, created for me from photo speed for this paper, which is the paper that I use the majority of the time. I've also had it created for a few other papers as well. Um, but when you simulate paper and ink, what, what um, Lightroom does is try to match the color gamma of one color space, which is the printed color space, to the one that you're looking at on, on your screen. Um, whether that's um, Adobe RGB or sRGB. And obviously it's never gonna be perfect. I find that the Simulate Paper and Ink for this particular paper gives it slightly a, a more of a sort of a dull look than, than necessary. What I know usually works, so, so what I usually do is I go into the Develop module and I slightly um, increase the contrast ever so slightly and when you do that it says do you want to create a proof copy and that's really good because it creates a copy of that image so a virtual copy of that image and that virtual copy then has that embedded profile of that paper in it 
So I, I've increased the contrast a little bit and I would also slightly increase the clarity, which brings just, a, a, just, it just, it just adds a little bit more punch when I print it out. And I find that just those two small changes, some images I change a little bit more, but most images, just those two small changes mean that it's almost an exact match to, the, to what I get on paper to what I get on the screen. The thing to remember is that when you print out something, then you're look at, looking at it from reflected light. Whereas when you're looking at it on the screen, you're looking at it um, from, from a backlit situation where the screen's being backlit. So it's usually a lot brighter on the screen than it is printed. And a lot of people have, have said to me in the past, certainly on the printing video that I did, which is probably linked here, that their images never look the same and I quite often think that that's because you're not looking at it in the in the right light really after you've printed it. So make sure you've got a really good, good light to look at your image and if you hang your image up and, and put it um, somewhere on the wall that you've got a spotlight on it and then you'll get a better representation of what it looked like on the screen. So once I've done that I would go to the print module and everything's pretty much done for me then really. Um, make sure I've got the right Prints um, paper size, which in this case is A3. Just scroll down to the bottom here. I've got it at 300 ppi, standard, media type matte, because it's a matte paper. It's already embedded that profile. Once I've done that, I would just click on printer, go down to quality and media, and make sure I've got matte photo paper and print quality highest. And that's it, click print, and let's have a look at it. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you this image, which is an image that I overlooked um, and because I, I wasn't sure about it. But then when I came back to it and edited it, I really liked it and I'm gonna show you this printed out as well. Okay, so here we have the print and it, I, really, I really like it. And what, what really attracted me to this image was obviously these leading lines here. So, so where the sun has cast its golden rays on this side of the rock here, just looks really great. And then this rock just brings your eye in down here and then down to the lake in the distance. I really like it. The reason that I wasn't so sure about it is that because the light was just dying really quickly, the light had fallen off this main rock in the distance here. And again, it had fallen in the area in the in the valley here so it wasn't creating these shadows on the trees but but having looked at it again i i think it works the cloud sort of anchors the top of the image really well and i think when you have really great clouds in an image it makes a really big difference to, to just drawing your eye to the subject so what i've tried to do is create quite uniformity in this in the foreground here which is always a really good idea to do and then your eye leads up here and down there and then again if you come into this corner your eyes pull back round into the image into this area here which is ultimately where I want somebody to go. So if we just go and have a look at the other image. So this one is where we had much more direct sunlight so you can see the difference for a start. Um, so you can see that here where the sun here where the sunlight is on the grass you've got shadows and more contours and long shadows and you haven't got those in, in this one here and, and again the sunlight's a lot brighter here so it's creating much stronger light on, on, on the grass but hopefully what you can see in, in this image is that um, I pulled out some of the green and, and it's not all orange in this bottom left corner and this sort of reflects back into this side of the image as well. Again, it's a similar type of composition where these lines are leading you up to this rock in the distance which is lit by the golden setting sun and then it brings you round to the lake here. And apart from that spot, which I didn't remove, really bad, then I'm, again, I'm really pleased with this image. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a really great image from an absolutely fantastic evening. So I'm sure that anybody who's watched many of my videos will realize by now that one of my greatest passions is printing my photos. I've, I've, I, I really enjoy it so much. Ever since I started doing it in the dark room many, many years ago and enjoyed rocking those trays and seeing the black and white prints emerge. But it's still as exciting. Even coming off the printer and watching it um, appear from the printer, it's, it's fantastic. So, if you, so if you, even if you haven't got a printer, send your photos off. Go and get them printed, you'll really, really enjoy it. And, it. and it's the end process of going out on the mountain and reliving those memories that you had. 
So one of the ways I make my living as well as workshops is selling my prints. So if you are interested in one of my limited edition prints, go and take a look at the website. If you do decide to buy one, it would massively help this channel and allow me to continue producing these videos. Um, I, I think of, of, of the two, I still, I, still, I still prefer this one, which was the original one that I showed at the end of my video. I really like the light in the, in the valley there. It looks fantastic. This one's now on my website. And there are a few others from other videos on, on there as well, including the eight that I, I selected as my best photos from last year. Anyway, go and take a look. Thanks ever so much for watching again. And until next Sunday, bye. <music>